In this video, we are going to solve the Navier-Stokes equation in a lit-driven scenario in roughly 200 lines of code, such that if you run the file, you will get beautiful streamlined visualizations of the fluid flow. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video. As said in the intro, we want to solve the Navier-Stokes equations. These are partial differential equations consisting of a momentum equation and an incompatibility constraint. The primary unknowns are the velocity and the pressure, and we have some differential operators here involved. We are going to solve these equations using finite differences and an explicit time stepping scheme, as well as Corin's projection in order to enforce the incompressibility. The lit driven cavity scenario works as following. We have a unit square domain where we enforce Dirichlet boundary conditions on the velocity at the left part, the right part and the bottom part, as well as in the normal velocity on the top. But we will have a horizontal velocity here at the very top of the slit and you can think of it as if there is some external flow passing by and in the beginning we have our fluid at rest in here and then this external flow will start creating some sort of swirly motion in here. The solution strategy is as following. As said, we will use a splitting method, so-called Corin's projection method, which first solves the momentum equations without the pressure gradient. Then we will solve a pressure Poisson equation to get a pressure correction. And then we update our velocities here. This video here will be just a quick implementation of this lit-driven cavity scenario. If you want more details on why we do the things we do, then check out the next video where we will go over everything in more detail. As said, the expected outcome is as following. I just have a streamline here that we get some swirly motion in the center of our lid driven by this external flow. We will be solving the Navier-Stokes equations in index notation. So that is because our velocity is a two-dimensional quantity here. We have a u component and a v component. And correspondingly, we also have a coordinate x and y. So I have also given here the three major equations again in index notation, but we will see them along the way. And then let's get started. Let's start by importing all necessary modules. We need mat.lib later on to visualize our streamlines. Then we need numpy for the computations. And I will also use tqdm as a simple progress meter here. Then let's define some constants. So we will be using 41 points for discretization per axis. We will have a domain size that has the extent 1.0. We will do 500 iterations in our explicit time stepping scheme. We will have a time step length of 0.001. We will have a kinematic viscosity, which is the new value in the equation of 0.1. We have a fluid that has a density of 1. And we will enforce a velocity at the top. So let's call this horizontal velocity top. And this one will be 1.0 in positive x direction. And then we also need to define another variable, the number of pressure Poisson iterations. But I will explain that in a second. And we set that one to 50. Then let's define a main function and keep it empty for now. And then let's implement a main switch such that the file is only executed within the Python interpreter. And then we call our main function here. And then we can get started. Let us first infer the element length. So since we will be using a uniform discretization, this is just the domain size divided by the number of points minus one. That is because the number of points includes the two boundary points. Then we can discretize in x direction by using numpy.linspace from zero to our domain size. And then we will be having the number of points here. We can do the same in y direction, numpy.linspace 
zero and then the domain size and the number of points. Then we can create our two dimensional mesh by using numpy mesh grid x and y. And then let's define the initial condition where we set our fluid is at rest such that our velocities in x, y and the pressure are zero. So let's call u the velocity in x direction and say that is zeros like the crit in x and v previous is np dot zeros like also x because x and y have the same shape. They are 41 by 41. And then we have our p previous and let me fix that typo here which will also be numpy dot zeros like of x. Now, before we can start with our time stepping, let us define discretized differential operators. And we will first start with the partial differences. And for this, we will be using a central difference scheme. So let's call this central difference. And then we take the central difference in x direction, where we input yeah, some field f, whatever it is, velocity or pressure. And then we define the differentiated object as a zero-like tensor and then fill it at its interior points. So you will see this quite often here. These are just the points that not lie on the boundary and we fill them with a central difference. So we take the interior in y direction and then advance one point further down the line and then we subtract Again, we keep interior in y direction and then move one point backwards in x direction. And if you're now wondering, in the ordering here, x comes at the second place and y is at that place. And therefore we call it the central difference in x. And then for the central difference, we have to divide by two times the element length. And then we can return this differentiated object. Let's do the same with the central difference in y. So central difference in y, also taking an f object here and the differentiated object will again be a zeros like tensor. And that is of course such that we have zero derivative on the boundaries. And then let's fill the interior values and do the same strategy, but here we of course have to adjust the very first entry. So we go from advance by one step and then we take the interior point here and then subtract where we go one step smaller. So we go from zero to minus two and then also take the interior points in X again. And then similar strategy, we divide by two times the element length and let me fix that here. And then we can return the differentiated object. And then we also need a discretized Laplace operator. I will just call this Laplace and this will take an F. And for the Laplace, we will be using the five point stencil. Again, we first create a zeros like object and then we fill the interior values and say, for this, let's go back one index in X as well as in Y. So we will do F and then interior in y and say 0 to minus 2 in x and then we add the same strategy in y direction so we also have the interior points in x then and then we have to subtract four times the center point so we have f 1 to minus 1 and 1 to minus 1 and then let's advance one point in x and y direction such that first here we are getting the two all the way to the end. So maybe let's add a plus. And then the same in y direction. So we do from zero all the way to the end and then take the interior points in x direction. And then we have to divide that by the element length squared and return it. And that's our Laplace operator. And then we can finally start with the time stepping. So we will do our iteration and say for something in TQDM in order to get our progress meter and then do range number of iterations. And then we first solve the momentum without the pressure gradient such that we get a tentative velocity. 
And for this, let us first define derivatives of u previous with respect to x, which is the central difference in x on u previous. And then we need a partial derivative of u previous with respect to y, which will be the central difference in y on u previous. And we need the partial derivative of the v previous with respect to x, which will be the central difference in x on v previous. Then this partial derivative of v previous with respect to y. And I think you get the pattern here and do v previous in here. Then we need the Laplace applied to u previous. For this, we will use the Laplace on u previous. And we need the Laplace on v previous. And you get the pattern, I think, which is Laplace applied to v previous. As said, we perform a tentative step by solving the momentum equations without the pressure gradient. And let me fix that typo here. So let's do that as that in index notation. And we will just use a simple forward Euler discretization in time and say u tentative is u previous plus the time step length multiplied. And then we have first our nonlinear convection which consists of u previous times the derivative of u previous with respect to x plus v previous times the derivative of u previous with respect to y. And then we add the, the fusion term. For this, we will use kinematic viscosity times the da plus of u previous. And then we have a tentative velocity in x. Let's do the same with retent and have v previous plus time step length multiplied with first the nonlinear convection, which consists of u previous times d v previous times dx plus v previous times dv previous times dy. You have to be a little bit careful with the nonlinear convection that can be confusing from time to time. And then we add the diffusion in this velocity component and have it here. And then as said, we have to enforce our boundary conditions. And we say we have the velocity boundary conditions. And let me repeat them here. We have homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions everywhere except for the horizontal velocity at the top, which is prescribed. Okay, let's do that and say u tentative, and then we do it first at the bottom. So we are in the zero point in y direction, and we are over all points in x direction, which is the bottom. And here we just put that to zero. Then we have the same for this one here, which will be the zero component in x and all components in y direction, which is the left boundary. That one is zero. And then we have u tentative in this one here, which will be all points in y, but the last point in x, which is of course the right boundary, set it to zero. And then we have the top boundary, which is minus one, and then all in x. And here we prescribe the horizontal velocity. Let's do a similar thing with v, but here everything is zero. So let me just copy that and change that here to v. And then we also have to change this here to zero. And with this, we have our first step done, which is a tentative velocity. Next, we need the pressure correction. For this, we have to evaluate the divergence of our velocity field. So we need to take derivatives again. So du tentative with respect to x, which will be central difference in x on u tentative, then dv tentative with respect to y, which will be the central difference in y 
on v tentative. And note here, we don't need the mixed derivative because we are just evaluating the divergence. With the divergence, we can build up the pressure Poisson problem in which the right hand side does not change. So let me just give the headline here. We will compute a pressure correction by solving the pressure Poisson equation. And for this, we can define the right hand side as density divided by time step length or rho divided by delta t multiplied with the divergence of our tentative velocity, which is du tentative dx plus dv tentative dy. The solution to the pressure Poisson problem is solving a linear system. However, here we will be using for simplicity just a smoothing procedure that is approximating the solution to this linear system. And for this we will use some inner iterations and say for something in range of the number of pressure Poisson iterations, we will solve the pressure Poisson problem or smooth it by saying p next is np dot zeros like our p previous and then say p next at the interior points is going to be 1 over 4 and this 1 over 4 arises from the 5 point stencil multiplied with and here we will be having all components in the 5 point stencil except the center point so we will be having a positive contribution from going one step backwards in x direction so we have all nodes in y direction and then we will go one step backwards in x direction so from zero to minus two and then let's do the same in y direction from zero to minus two and then all points or all interior points in x direction and then let's go one step positively in x and y direction so we do p previous all points in y direction but here we go a positive step same strategy for the y direction taking taking a positive step and keeping all interior nodes in the upper direction and from that we are going to subtract the element length squared that also arises from the five point stencil multiplied with the interior points of the right hand side and then we have to enforce boundary conditions for our pressure term and here we will be having Neumann boundary conditions so let me write that down we have the pressure boundary conditions which are homogeneous Neumann boundary conditions everywhere except for the top so that was the one where we had the horizontal velocity where it is a homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition so there we will prescribe a zero pressure in other words so let's do that first p next at well here we will be having all points in y direction and the negative one in x direction which is the right boundary and in order to enforce an homogeneous Neumann boundary condition we will make sure that the derivative across the boundary will be zero and therefore we will be setting the boundary value to the value of the next interior node by saying p next at minus two which will be the, the second to last element in x direction then let's do a similar thing at the bottom boundary so we will be having p next at zero in x direction and all nodes in y direction will be p next and then we of course need the one more inwards to the domain here's it's a one and then we are good to go and the left boundary condition is going to be all points in y and point zero in x direction which will just be all points in y direction and point one in x direction. 
And then we finally have our homogeneous Dirichlet boundary condition at the top. So P next at the top, which will be the negative one in y direction in all points in x direction is zero. And then in order to have our scheme here iterative, we have to say that the previous pressure is the next pressure. And then this will smooth. We set this to 50. So we will be doing 50 iterations here. And then we have approximately solved our pressure for song problem. Then we can go on with the velocity correction. And for this, we need the pressure gradient. So we need the derivatives of the scalar pressure field with respect to each of the coordinate axes. So we will do dp next with respect to x. It's going to be the central difference in x on p next. And we will do dp next dy, which is the central difference in y on p next. And then we have our last task, which is to correct the velocities such that the fluid stays incompressible, which is what we have to enforce due to our incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. Well, then let's do the correction in x by saying u next is going to be u tentative minus time step length divided by density multiplied with dp next by dx. So the x component of our gradient and the similar thing is for the next velocity component in y, which will be the tentative component minus the time step length divided by the density multiplied with the contribution in y direction. And then we have to again use the boundary conditions. I will just copy them from here. Now we just have to change the name from tentative to next. I will just use a batched renaming here and saying that is next. And then similar to the iteration with the pressure per song problem, we also have to advance. So say advance time and say that u previous is u next, v previous is v next, and p previous is p next. And if we then didn't do any mistakes, we can plot our solution we will first create a new matplotlib figure and then let's create a contour plot for the pressure by doing plt.contourf on first x and y mesh and then p next which will be the value after the very last iteration. Let's also activate the color bar and then let's first create a quiver plot which is a vector plot where we do x, y the mesh and then u next and v next. I will just set the color to be black arrows and then let's show the plot what we have here and then we can run our script by saying python lit driven cavity and we see we have a small error here so we can quickly debug it because here we wrongly put or I wrongly put a zero here. It should be a two. And if we then run it again, we get our plot here. That's the one from the intro or at least close to it. Let's make it a little larger. And we see we have our 41 by 41 crit. And at each point, we have an arrow associated with it. And due to the external flow driving our, yeah, our swirly motion in here, we have the arrows going to the right and we have that one going clockwise. And additionally, we see that our flow is respecting the boundary conditions so it's not going into or coming out of the boundaries here and we also see due to the fact that the flow has to leave it here again there is some sort of a higher pressure because the flow is pressing against the wall there whereas here there is a negative pressure it is somewhere coming from this but that's not the promise plot we don't have a streamline plot yet so let me close that down and that's just another call to matplotlib so let's comment that one out and do plt.streamplot x, y, u next, v next. And let's also make the streamlines appear in black. 
and then let's run that again. This one will take a little bit to process. Okay, here we have it. And then we finally have this swirly motion, which is even more beautifully showing how our fluid is flowing in here and creating these swirl in the center. There is one last thing I want to highlight. So if we close the plot here, and then I will change this back to the quiver plot. And then let's go up and play around with the parameters, which I would also encourage you to do, and change the kinematic viscosity to 0.2, for instance, and then run it again. We see, oh, it says invalid value encountered in subtract. What happened here? And the problem here is that we are using an explicit time scheme in order to solve our momentum equation for the tentative velocity. And this one is conditionally stable. So meaning it, there is a condition which it has to fulfill in order to be stable. In more concrete terms, we are using a forward in time central in space stencil to solve this equation. And this one has a condition that can be derived for the simple case of the heat equation. And I just want to implement that with you by doing a safety switch here by computing the maximum possible time step length. So this is the maximum possible time step length. That's a rather lengthy word. And this one is given as, or at least in the case for the heat equation, as 0 0.5 times element length squared divided by the kinematic viscosity. And then let's just do an if statement here saying that if our time step length is larger than this maximum possible time step length, then we will raise an runtime error saying stability is not guaranteed. And then if we close that and run our file again, we say, hmm, it is still running through. What is happening here? Well, let's change the viscosity and go a little bit higher, let's say 0 0.5. Then our switch will work because then it can for sure say it's not stable anymore. But the problem here is that we are not just solving the heat equation. So we have to account for some more difficulties. And therefore I will introduce a stability safety factor and say that is 0 0.5. And if we then go to our switch, we say that our time step length has to be smaller than the stability safety factor multiplied with this maximum possible time step length. And if we then change our kinematic viscosity to 0 0.2 again, run it, then it will call the switch again. But if we go back to our original scenario, with 0 0.1, it should run down just fine and we get our solution. So as said, feel free to play around with the parameters and with the safety switch. You should also be most of the time on the stable side and try to experience how fluid flow behaves in this lid driven cavity scenario. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then please consider liking and subscribing. I would extremely appreciate this. The channel consists of many more videos like this. If there is anything unclear, then please also take a look at the follow-up video where we go over all the calls in way more detail. If there's still something unclear, then also write a comment. I would be happy to help you. Here you will now see similar videos. And with this, I hope to see you in the next one.